What's up, y'all? I'm Tom, and this is Like a Math Class. In statistics, there's two types of quantitative data. There is discrete data, and there is continuous data. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can organize some discrete or countable data. Let's get to it. So here we've got a fifth grade teacher who has 25 students in their class, and they have the following reading scores. Uh, we've got all 25 scores listed out right here. So we want to describe the distribution of this data. Now, there's two ways that people typically start organizing their data. The first thing they do is they'll list it all out in a row uh, from uh, lowest to highest. And then uh, they'll start organizing it that way, uh, kind of rearranging them so we've got lowest to highest over here. Or the other way to do it is to create a table like we're going to do here. We're going to create a frequency table. Uh, and a frequency table looks a little bit like this. Uh, over here, we've got the, uh, the scores. And as we're looking through the scores here, it looks like uh, 20, 17 is our lowest, 22 is our highest, uh, still 22, 16. Okay, so we're looking at 16 to 22. So we're going to have 16... 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Now the next thing we're going to put is our tally. If you want to organize these uh, linearly, if you want to just kind of list them all out, it's, you're going to be doing essentially the same thing that we're doing right now. Uh, but this is kind of nice to have it organized this way. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to check for all the 16s first. So I see 116 here, so I'm going to put a tally there. Uh, then I'm going to find the 17s. Here's 117, and that's it. Just 117 as well. Now we've got our 18s. 118, two, uh, two 18s. All right. And then we've got 19, one, two, three, four 19s. One, two, three, four, 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twenties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Twenty-one. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, twenty-ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. And twenty-twos. We've got one, twenty-two, two, three, four, twenty-twos. One, two, three, four. And now what I'm going to do over here in the next column is I'm going to put the frequency. And the frequency is just a, a total of these, like a, a row total of these things. So we've got 1 for 16, 1 for 17, 2 for 18, uh, 4 for 19, 7 for 20, 6 for 21, and 4 for 22. And if we add these up, we should have 25 because there's 25 students. So here's where I check to see did I get everyone. So here's 10 17, uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I've got a total of 25. Uh, so I know that I have the full amount there. Now, sometimes in this last column, you don't always see this, but it's, it's a nice little add-on depending on how you might analyze the data. Uh, and this is called our relative frequency. Now, again, you're not always going to do this, but the relative frequency is simply the, the amount that you have over the total. So this is going to be 1 out of 25. This is going to be 1 out of 25, 2 out of 25, 4 out of 25, and so on. And I like to also convert these to a decimal. So let's do that as well. So we are going to have 1 divided by 25 is 0 0.04. We're gonna and there's another 0 0.04. There's two divided by 25. So there's 0 0.08. Four divided by 25. There's 0 0.16. Seven. 0 0.28. Six divided by 25. We haven't done that one yet. 0 0.24. 0 0.24. And we already did uh, four out of 25, so that's gonna be 0 0.16. So um, this is another good check. The relative frequencies are like a percentage, so they should add up to 100%, or in our case, one, because we're using them as decimals. Also, we did see that all of the numerators, all of these values did add up to 25, so we do have 25 out of 25, 
But if you wanted to add up each of these things as well, you should also see that that comes out to be 1.0. Now, these decimals all came out nicely. We didn't have to do any rounding. So in this case, uh, it came out to exactly 1.0. Sometimes if you have to round up or round down a little bit here and there, you might get to 0.99 or 1.01. That happens sometimes. That's okay. Uh, just kind of know that you needed to get close to 1.0. Uh, so now if we want to describe, if we want to describe the distribution, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a graph for this. And there's really two graphs that you can do with this. And you can use the different frequencies or relative frequencies with each graph. So for the first one, what I'm going to do is I've got a lot of spaces here. So, you know, typically you put a number right here on the line. Since this one I'm over here, I'm going to do a bar graph or sometimes they call them a column graph. And over here, I'm going to do what's called a dot plot. I'm going to, I'm going to, since I've got just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers, and I've got all these lines, I, like I said, I'm just going to put these right in the middle here. So I'm going to call this 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22 and 23. Well, we don't have any 23s, but that's okay. And then over here, I've got a frequency. This is going to be my frequency. I didn't say that. That's going to be our frequency. And this is going to be our reading scores. And let's continue filling up our scale over here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's my frequency. Uh, so I'm looking at my uh, frequency. So this one I'm going to be looking at this is what I'm going to be looking at, my frequency and my scores. Here's my reading scores. Here's my frequency, right? Uh, so I'm going to do 1 for 16. I'm going to do 1 for 17. I've got 2 for 18. I've got 4 for 19. We've got 7. Let's see. 7 is going to be about right there. So 7 for 20. We'll erase this. And here we go, so seven, and then we've got uh, six. So again, let's kind of, there we go, there's six. It's a good way to kind of make sure that you're getting the right heights in there. And then we have four once again. And because I can do this, look at that. I'm gonna just duplicate that and pop that over there. Aha, the way you can cheat when you've got technology. All right, um, so here is our bar, our bar graph or our column graph. If we wanted to do our dot plot, we could do the same thing. Uh, but what I typically would do, and I'm going to use in this one, I'm going to use the relative frequency. And down here, I'm going to do the reading scores again. All right, so with a dot plot, again, you could line it up exactly on the lines. But since we've got so many, I'm just going to put them... Uh, so many lines here, I'm just going to put them in between and make like kind of a wide, uh, wide space here for my different numbers. And over here on the relative frequency, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my decimal values. So if you notice over here, I only go up to my relative frequency only goes up to close to 0 0.3. So I don't need to go all the way up to 100% here because then I'm going to have a really short graph. I'm going to have all my data just kind of smooshed down here. So I'm going to try and spread it out a little bit like I did here. And since I'm going to 30, uh, let's see, that's point, uh, let's go up by 0 0.4. So we'll go point, uh, 0 0.04, sorry, not 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.12, 0 0.16, 0 0.20, 0 0.24, 0 0.28, 0.32. So there's going to be my relative frequency. So now I'm going to plot these values here uh, along these lines. I'm going to put dots in their places. So here I've got one dot. Uh, let's see, 17, I've got one dot as well. 18, I've got 0 0.08, so I'm going to have two dots, one, two. 19, I've got 0 0.16, so I'm going to have one, two, three, four dots. 20, I've got seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 0 0.24 again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then finally, 0 0.16. One, two, three, 
for. Okay, so clearly there is not a lot of difference between these two. And you could use the relative frequency over here with the, uh, the column chart, or you could use the regular frequency uh, over here with the dot plot. It really doesn't matter which way you go. They're both going to give you roughly the same thing because you can see here that we have roughly the same picture. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, create a generalization. And by doing this, we're going to just draw a line uh, and try and see if we can roughly feel for what this data looks like. So this is kind of going like this. It's going up and then it drops down really fast. And same thing over here. It's kind of going here, it goes up, and then it drops down really fast. So you might notice that it's not symmetric. It's not like a bell curve of any kind, but it's kind of got a longer stretch over this way and a quick drop off over here. And uh, that's called a skewed data. So we actually have three different types. This is skewed left, by the way. The data is skewed left or it's skewed negative, negatively skewed. So you're talking about which direction the tail is, right? This is the tail direction. And the tail being um, the, the kind of the part that's extending out here, we call this the tail. So you're skewing in the direction of the tail. So obviously you can have a couple different types of skews. So we already saw that you can have a skew left. You could also have a skew right. See how good I am at drawing this. And then you could have a symmetric curve as well. That's as symmetric as I can get it freehand. So this is skewed left, or as I said, this is negative. This is skewed right, or we'll say positive, And this is symmetric. Now, technically, you could have uh, a symmetric curve that also looks like this, because that one would also be symmetric if we split it across here it's still symmetric on both sides. So that's how we describe the distribution. We say that it's either skewed left or skewed in the negative direction or um, no or, just skewed left or skewed negative. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if it was, make sure you give me a like uh, and I'll see you in the next video where we talk about mean, median, and mode, the central tendency, and how that is impacted by skewed data as well. I'll see you there.